Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we're taking a look at the official PlayStation Backbone 1 controller. It comes with full support for the iPhone and the PS5, including the various buttons, remote play and of course this awesome new design. I'll get this unboxed, set it up and show you how it works with the PlayStation app as well as a few non-PlayStation games. I'll also try and answer some of the questions you might have had about this device. Now I've only been using this for the last few days, but I already think this could be the ultimate mobile gaming or even PlayStation 5 accessory to buy. Right, and here's the box, and straight away you'll notice it's clearly on brand with the PlayStation 5. In fact, it looks like every official accessory that we've seen from Sony. Inside the box we get the Backbone 1 controller itself, which looks awesome, and then there's an adapter for the larger iPhones, a quick start guide, and a safety sheet. So first impressions on this controller, well I really like the colour and the design. I know it's similar to the original Backbone 1 controller, but this has a nice clean black and white PS5 design. It also matches the DualSense controller if you're still using the white one. Looking around, there's the Backbone logo on the front, which will obviously be covered up by your phone once it's installed. And on the back, there's a PlayStation logo, which is a really nice touch. But yeah, on first impressions, I do like the look of this controller. When it comes to setting it up, it's a simple plug and play. Pull the controller apart and just slide your phone in. But just make sure that it fits into the lightning port as this is how it connects to your iPhone, it's not via Bluetooth. Now this controller does fit and support every iPhone since the 6S, so anything up to and including the 13 Pro Max. Some iPhones will need an adapter to fit it due to the camera bump, but fortunately this adapter is included in the box. I'm using the 13 Pro Max here and it fits absolutely fine with the adapter, although I did need to remove my case first. And here's the iPhone 13 mini without the adapter to give you an idea of what the smallest iPhone looks like with it. Once fitted, you just need to go ahead and download the Backbone 1 app as well as the PlayStation Remote Play app, but I will cover more on that in a minute. As for the controls, we've got pretty much every button you would expect to see. It really is like a mini PS5 controller. There's the D-pad with that transparent design going on, and these feel really nice and firm to the touch. And then we've got the triangle, circle, cross and square icons on the right. Now you might have noticed that the thumbsticks are different to what you'd expect to see on an official PlayStation controller. These are more like the Xbox or the Switch controllers with that asymmetrical layout. But they are also very small and not as big as the normal console controllers, but they are still clickable and feel very firm. We then have four extra buttons, so one of these is the share or the screenshot button as you'd expect to see it on the PS5, and the other is a screen recording button. This actually lets you record your gameplay straight to your iPhone. On the right side we have a dedicated Backbone app button, which I will show you more on in a minute. And next to that we've got the start or the menu button. Across the top we've got the L and the R buttons or triggers which feel really nice. And these are actual triggers too rather than digital buttons. So in some games like racing games for example you have a more linear response rather than just an on or off. Right let me show you the Backbone app. And the quickest way to do this is to use the orange button on the controller. Now this app is optional, it is not required to use with the controller at all. It's actually very very good. The interface is nice and it carries over the PlayStation Blue theme. And you're able to see all of the games and streaming apps available. You can of course navigate around this app using the controller or your touchscreen. And as you can see there are popular or feature games all listed in the same app. Now not all of these are installed on my iPhone or on my PlayStation. Some are just recommended games to download and play. But as you can see here there's also the remote play as well as the Xbox app which if you tap it it will jump straight over to those apps instead. So to use the PlayStation 5 you will need the PS Remote Play app installed on your iPhone. You then need to make sure that on your console you have Remote Play enabled and that's on both the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 5. Without that it simply will not work. So now you've got the app installed, you've got it set up on your PlayStation, you need to click on the PS5 and it will start searching for it on your network. And once it's found it, it will then switch it on remotely. And now as you can see, we've got full control of my PlayStation 5 via the iPhone. Obviously this feature isn't new, we've actually had this app for quite a while now. But being able to navigate around with the Backbone 1 controller is so much easier. At least it's far easier than using the touchscreen controls on the phone. So my PS5 is wired to my network, which is going to be the best option when it comes to reducing the lag. And as I navigate around the dashboard, it is near instant, there's no delay at all. Now both my iPhone and PlayStation 5 are on the same network, but they don't need to be. As long as they both have a good internet connection, you can still log in and play. And if you want to use your mobile data, you can do that as well. You just need to go into the settings on the PS Remote Play app and enable that under mobile data. But again, there's little to no lag, and that's considering I'm accessing the PS5 via my mobile data rather than the local Wi-Fi. And while we're on the PS5, let me show you what these buttons do. So the share button acts the same way as the share button on the DualSense controller, and that lets you capture gameplay and share it through the console. Then the other button is for capturing gameplay directly to your iPhone. So this is a really cool feature if you want to keep it local. And if you wondered what happens to the PlayStation 5 while you're logging in remotely, well it turns the console on as normal so anybody sat in the room would see exactly what you were doing. 
Now playing games like Warzone is probably not ideal for remote play, but the fact is I can play them if I want to. I mean the input lag on this is fast, but it's going to still be too slow for FPS games where you need lightning fast reactions. But any other games that you don't need that instant response are absolutely fine. Gran Turismo 7 for example, well that works well and the triggers feel great. And as mentioned before, the triggers or the L2 and the R2 buttons are linear, so you can adjust how much power you wish to use. And while you're gaming, you can of course use wired or wireless headphones. So if you have some air pods for example well you can obviously connect those to your iphone via bluetooth but if you have a pair of wired headphones well you can use a 3.5 mm headphone jack on the controller itself and also while gaming you can still charge your iphone while you're playing as there's actually a pass-through port on the bottom but yeah remote playing games on here is easy fast and they look great the controller feels nice and balanced as well it's not too heavy and not too cheap and plasticky it really is like having a portable ps5 in your pocket but what if you don't have a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5, or you just don't want to use the PS Remote app? Well, you're not limited to just using PlayStation games, you can actually use other games in the App Store. Now, as long as the games you're wishing to play have controller input support, you can use it with pretty much anything. So if you're on Xbox, for example, well, you can use the Xbox app to control your Series X or your Series S and play those games. Or if you wanted to play some mobile games instead, like COD Mobile, again, this will work. Now, I don't play this game that often, but the last time I did was with the Red Magic 7 mobile phone and that had inbuilt shoulder triggers. Now that phone was really easy to use but this controller is on a whole different level. I've also tried a few Apple Arcade games and games from the App Store and as long as the controller support is listed they will obviously work well. Of course you've got other streaming services you could use your iPhone as well as this controller with and that includes Stadia and Nvidia's GeForce Now. And as for the price, well, the Backbone one is just under £100 or $100 when you buy it directly from their website. It was actually the only place I could find them when I bought one earlier this month, and then delivery took just under three weeks. Now, £100 or $100 might seem expensive for a mobile controller, but I feel it's actually worth it with the design and the functionality that you're getting. It also comes with a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee, as well as 12 months warranty. Now, of course, if you've already got an iPhone and a PlayStation 5, you don't technically need one of these controllers. You can, of course, use the Remote Play app on a normal controller and connect it via Bluetooth. It will obviously work, but it's not going to be as good as this dedicated Backbone 1 controller. So my final thoughts on the PlayStation controller for iPhone is I really like it. I mean, what's not to love is on brand with the PlayStation 5. It fits my 13 Pro Max and it's small enough to store away when I'm not using it. I also think it's far better than just using a DualSense controller over Bluetooth. So until Sony release an updated PS Vita, this is the best and cheapest option right now. But what do you think? Could this be the ultimate portable mobile gaming accessory to buy? And will you pick one up for yourself? Drop a Backbone PS5 in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PS Vita 10 years later video next. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.